him we pray and everybody said father we do thank you for the workers meeting today we're asking lord that you open our eyes of understanding help us lord to evangelize our land intelligently help us lord to know the message of salvation and to master the message of salvation and to have the zeal and the fire and the power, the conviction to pass the message of salvation across to everyone around us in Jesus' name. We pray that nobody will perish because of our carelessness. And Lord, we pray you give us real focus on what great commission you have given the church. And to arise and do the work you've given us to do. And we pray that great will be the reward of your people in Jesus' name. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you. You can sit down. I don't need to ask you today where Jingole is, where Bagada is, where Shomolu is, and where Ketu is. Now this is my place. And so I know everyone. And I see you, if you are making trouble now, I know you. Praise the Lord. You never make trouble, you are people of God. Tomorrow we have uh, something special and something important in the whole city of Lagos. And that is our tract uh, distribution day. And uh, we praise the Lord because uh, everyone will be involved. Our group pastors will be there. Give me a good day. Amen our location pastors and our district pastors you'll all be there in jesus name and all our workers everybody you are working this section this section that section everyone will be involved in fact our members uh, if anyone is born again tomorrow is for every one of us am i speaking for you you'll be there in jesus name and those who are coming for combined service tomorrow, we will not make any excuse and say, because we went for combined service, and then we branch another place, tomorrow, everyone, we're going to do this in Jesus' name. And uh, then the extra day, of course, on the 8th of uh, May, uh, those who are coming for combined service will also go out real in mass, because tomorrow, we're going to really have a source into the kingdom. Now, if we're going to do this effectively, we need to know what we're doing. And everyone that calls himself a Christian must know who is a Christian. And when we talk about eternity, what's eternity? And when you're reading the tract to them, I hope that you don't just take the tract in your hand and then you're looking down and you never see the face of the person you're reading to. You want it to be interactive. It is not just to read because all those things, in fact, if you have read it over and over and over again, when you come to the prospects you are talking to, you're able to read at ease and you're able to make eye connection with them and you're able to read intelligently and it will be you know when there's a paragraph you stop there and you might even make some explanation not just to read through and then say i have read through it is to catch the people and it is to make them have real conviction they'll have the conviction in jesus name and we're not passing out you know salvation on paper we're passing out the salvation from the very heart of christ and we're passing to the hearts of the people they're going to receive the lord they will repent i said they will repent and they believe on the lord jesus christ and tomorrow lives are going to change in this city of lagos in jesus name and all our states who are connected with us now and every region anywhere you are you will ask uh, you know how we did it in lagos you can contact our church secretary and he will explain all those details to you because every city in nigeria give me a good amen, amen. every community in nigeria there's going to be transcription uh, i hope it's not just english only english Shiroba, Igbo, Aosa, Efi, many many languages that they can read we're going to get all these tracts out and it's going to be a great harvest in jesus name 
now for us to understand the importance of what we're doing tonight we're looking at hebrews chapter 2 hebrews chapter 2 and i'm going to read just one verse of scripture and it's in verse 3 hebrews chapter 2 verse 3 it says how shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed unto us by them that heard him. You see here, it's talking about salvation. It's talking about a great salvation. It's talking about so great salvation. Why is it so great? Because its value is limitless. It is so great salvation. That's why I want to look at that verse. I'm talking to you tonight on the inestimable value of the great salvation. The inestimable value of the great salvation. When we say something is inestimable, it's too precious to be estimated. It's too great to put a value or a price on. And it is so wonderful that if you don't have it, you'll be of all men that was ever born in the world, the most miserable. And it says, how shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation, which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord, and then was confirmed to us by them that urge him. Now, let's ask the question, when you say something is great, you must have a reason in your mind. And when the Holy Ghost, you know, the Holy Ghost is the author of the scriptures. And he used all these apostles and all these men to pen it down. What did the Holy Ghost have in mind when he said, their salvation is great? Their salvation is so great. And then he says, how shall we escape? If we neglect so great salvation, number one, it's great because of a great experience. A great experience. We had no peace. We were in turmoil. We were confused. And that's why you hear many people committing suicide. They are fed up with life. The confusion is so much. And then salvation comes. A great experience of peace with God. A great experience of the peace of God. A great experience of peace within, number one, because it gives us a great experience, number two, because of a great expense, expense. That is, the price of that salvation is so great, it took the blood, the pure blood, the spotless blood of the sinless Christ to go to the cross of Calvary and to die for us. And that's the price of our salvation. That's what Jesus paid his blood because of a great expense. Number three, because of a great exchange. A great exchange. You see, when you purchase something, that's an exchange. You give money, and then the person is selling gives you the commodity. The exchange, we gave him our sin. He gave us his righteousness. It's like we gave him something worthless. We gave him something worse than worthless, and he gave us something of value of great esteem we give him something from the adamic nature he gave us something from god's own nature because of that great exchange that's why it says salvation is great number four because of a great escape a great escape you see everybody would have perished and gone to hell and then jesus christ came and he died for us and now we escape we escape from the earthly prison and we escape from the eternal prison we escape the judgment of god we escape the wrath of god because of a great escape and there is no other thing that can make this escape available for you and for me except the salvation that jesus gave on the cross of calvary and because of that great escape what a great salvation number five because of a great emancipation emancipation it's like we were tied down slaves of sin and slaves of satan and nobody could emancipate us or set us free and the rope was too thick 
and the chain was so strong that nothing could set us free until Jesus came and he died on the cross of Calvary and now we have a great emancipation he has redeemed us he has set us free he has broken our chain and he has untied and loosened everything that bound us what a great emancipation that's why it's such a great salvation number six because of a great endowment endowment you see when we get saved he endows us he gives us an inheritance from heaven and because of that inheritance the endowment and the endowment that nobody could give us and it comes through this salvation that's why it say this is so great salvation because of the great endowment number seven because of the great exaltation he lifts us from the dungeon and then he lifts us far above into heaven that we might sit together in the heavenly places with the lord jesus christ it's a great exaltation so great salvation why is it so great number one because of a great experience number two because of a great expense number three because of a great exchange number four because of a great escape number five because of a great emancipation freedom number six because of a great endowment number seven because of a great exaltation number eight because of a glorious eternity because of a glorious eternity because of this salvation we are transferred from hell to heaven because of this great salvation we come out of darkness into light because of this great salvation we come from enmity with god and we come to eternal friendship with the almighty god because of this great salvation eternity will be bright eternity will be blissful eternity will be a great pleasure eternity will be a great unspeakable joy because of the glorious eternity that day salvation brings to us what a great salvation and that's why it's saying how shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation which at the first was spoken by the lord jesus christ himself and then he went to the cross of calvary and he paid the price and he purchased it for you and for me and now whosoever shall call on the name of the lord shall be saved and as you go out tomorrow and then in a friendly way in a normal way in a good way with a smile on your face because you are selling something you are not selling because you want money you're selling because you want their commitment they buy this by repentance they get this by faith in christ and with a smile on your face like a salesman coming from heaven you tell them this is so great salvation you cannot reject this you cannot neglect it and they will say yes Yes, I want that salvation through you tomorrow somebody will get saved and through your effort and through your talking and through your communication with them somebody will get this great salvation in Jesus name remember the topic we're talking about tonight the inestimable value of the great salvation the inestimable value of the great salvation three things we're going to consider number one the conversion of our nature the conversion of our nature when we're talking about salvation that's what salvation does it takes hold of you and it passes through you through the blood of jesus and by the time you come out you're a new creature already i see new creatures uh, at home here today are you there because of the conversion of our nature number two the consequence of our neglect the consequence of our neglect if i don't tell them if you don't tell them if we don't tell them or if the people here and they don't respond the consequence of neglect number three the concern for our neighbor the concern for our neighbor if salvation is so great and you know about it if salvation is inestimable and you know about it if salvation is priceless and you know about it you must be concerned and you must tell the people that do not have this great salvation they will have it in jesus name 
Number one, what's number one over there? The conversion of our nature. Look at this, look at this. In Hebrews chapter 2 and I'm reading verse 3, it says in chapter 2 verse 3 Hebrews, it says, How shall we escape? If we neglect so great salvation, which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord. Have you noticed that when people came to the Lord Jesus Christ and then he touches their lives, a change came. A change in their soul. A change in their spirit. A change in their mind. A change of direction. A change of their lives. Salvation gives us conversion. It gives us transformation. It gives us a change. It is the conversion of our nature. In fact, as we even go to the Old Testament, the people who were saved, they testified about this, and you can find the conversion that took place. The conversion that took place. We're looking at Psalm 51. Psalm 51. And then you're going to find here is salvation. you find something before salvation and something after salvation. Look at verse 12 in verse 12 restore unto me the joy of thy salvation restore unto me that means it's lost it now he wants a restoration of the joy of that salvation now before that salvation before that restoration what was he how was he look at verse 5 behold i was shapen in iniquity and in sin did my mother conceive me. He said, I am a bundle of sin in my mind, in my thoughts, in my life, in my character, in my behavior. Everything about me within and out. Everything is sin because I was born in sin, shapen in iniquity. Now, when the salvation comes, what change? do we expect look at verse 7 purge me with Esau and I shall be clean wash me and I shall be whiter than snow that's the conversion it says that's a change I was black now I'll be whiter than snow I was evil now I will be good I was unrighteous now I will be righteous that's the conversion if that conversion is not there there's no salvation salvation is not just mental ascent salvation is not just I believe I believe salvation is not you know you were like this before after that so-called salvation you still remain the same person no punch me with his soul and I shall be clean. Wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. Look at verse 10. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. That's the salvation there. It says something new, something different will take place when you pass through the blood of the Lamb and you are cleansed and you are washed and you are forgiven and you are set free. There is a change, the conversion of our nature look at verse 12 now in verse 12 restore to me the joy of thy salvation and uphold me with thy right spirit look at verse 10 at verse 13 then what's that there for after you have restored me after i have salvation after i know that my sins are forgiven then will I teach transgressors thy way, and sinners shall be converted unto thee. Before you can tell other people about salvation, you yourself must have this restoration of salvation, this joy of salvation, and this evidence of salvation. There's a change in you. How do you go and tell another person how to receive forgiveness when you're still feeling guilty you have not been forgiven? How do you tell another person how to be clean when you have the guilt and the condemnation in you, you are dirty? How do you tell another person to be free from condemnation and damnation from hellfire when there is a doubt in your hand that if you died today, you are not sure of getting to heaven? How can you be on your way to hell and then telling other people, don't go to hell, don't go to hell? How can you, an unsaved man, unsaved woman, you don't have the assurance of salvation, and then you go to tell other people, how they are going to be sure of salvation? There must 
must be a conversion of your nature and it is from that conversion of your nature you're able to tell other people this is how i got it i came to christ i confessed my sin to christ and then i believed on the lord jesus christ and i was forgiven and the spirit of god bore witness in my heart my life is different my life is changed and what i have got i'm introducing to you you can be saved you must be born again the conversion of our nature i'm looking at ezekiel chapter 36 salvation is the conversion of our nature in ezekiel chapter 36 and i'm reading here from verse 25 ezekiel chapter 36 verse 25 then when i sprinkle clean water upon you and ye shall be clean from all your filthiness and from all your idols will i cleanse you that salvation right there now before that salvation how was he before that salvation how did heaven see him before that salvation what was he like look at that verse he had idols 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 in the mind idols of lust idols of covetousness idols of gold idols of silver idols of materialism that's the man that's the woman before that salvation look at this again it talks of feel the feel the language feel the lifestyle feel the behavior before the salvation and now the lord said i want to save you what salvation the cleansing from all that filthiness was salvation the removal of all those idols so that there is a change the man was filthy before now he's clean the woman was defiled before but now she's upright and clean there must be the evidence of the removal of that filthiness and the removal of that idol in the heart that's what salvation is is the conversion of nature we're looking at acts of the apostles chapter 2 acts of the apostles chapter 2 i'm reading from verse 36 acts of the apostles chapter 2 and we're looking at verse 36 look at this therefore let all the house of israel know assuredly that god has made the same jesus whom ye crucified both lord and christ what did these people do they crucified the lord and he said let his blood be upon us what did they do that they hated the lord they rejected the lord that's what they were before the salvation now see this in verse 37 now when they had this they were pricked in their heart and they said to peter and to the rest of the apostles men and brethren what shall we do and peter said unto them repent you see that and peter said unto them repent before that time they were not saved they had hatred for christ they had evil in their hearts they brought a curse upon themselves and now repent that's the turning point that's the dividing line between the past and then the future after that repentance look at this verse 41 verse 41 then they that godly received his word were baptized and the same day there were added unto them about three thousand souls and they continued steadfastly in the apostles do you see a change there do you see a transformation there do you see conversion there they had hatred before they didn't want to hear about christ or about peter about paul about uh, about john about james but now repent and be baptized in the name of jesus the name they didn't want to hear they repented 
they were saved and then you can see the difference after that not that they were running after them and you know they were still having their smokes and they were still having their alcohol and their idols no not at all they totally turned they totally changed and then they continued with the apostles in the apostles doctrine there is a conversion of nature when there is salvation and we're looking at chapter 3 chapter 3 of acts and i'm reading from verse 19 acts chapter 3 and we're looking at verse 19 it says repent ye therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the lord can you see the dividing line there it says repent ye therefore that's the dividing line what are they repenting of the sins to be blotted out before salvation there were sins that were still there sin in the heart and sin in the record of the sinner and sins in the presence of god and now he repents what happens? God blots out all the sins. That's the change. That's the transformation. That's the conversion. And then a time of refreshing comes from the presence of the Lord. When there is salvation, it's a conversion. And it's a change. And it's a transformation. And we can see the difference between what you are today and what you were in the past. Look at verse 26. Unto you first. God, having raised up his son, Jesus, sent him to bless you in turning away every one of you from his iniquities. Iniquities were there, and you were following that iniquity before salvation. At the point of salvation, you turn around, and you turn away from the iniquity. You can see the change there. Every time the Bible talks about salvation, and talks about it in terms of conversion, you can see the change that comes. The great salvation is a real conversion. Number one, a conversion of our nature. A conversion of our nature. You know, you see the dog. The dog has a nature that is uh, running after the vomit. You see the swine. The swine has the nature that delights in defilement. And the sinner has the nature that desires and delights in sinning. When salvation takes place, there's a turning around, and the things I used to love, I love them no more. The things I used to do, I do them no more. Number two, it's a change of heart. A change of heart. Some people say, my mind is there. I cannot get my mind up that thing. When you are born again, when you are converted, when there's salvation, your mind is turned away from that evil thing. It's a change of soul and spirit. A change of emotion, a change of attachment. You were attached to something evil before, but now, because of that salvation, there's a change in attachment. It's a change of desires. The things will be thirsty for, and the things will be hungry for, and the things, if you don't have it, if you don't commit that sin, you're not at trust. It's like uh, something is pushing you. Go and do it, go and do it. But now you are converted. There's a change of desires. You don't even want that thing anymore. You don't even want to go to that place anymore. It's a change of attitude. A change of attitude. You didn't love righteous people. You hated us. You didn't love a Bible-believing church. You hated us. You didn't love anything quiet and anything peaceful and anything holy, anything righteous. You hated it to the core. But now there's a change of attitude. You are born again and you are converted and you are saved. There's a change of attitude. There's a change of character. A change of lifestyle. 
now you wake up in the morning and your heart wants to read the bible on sunday you want to fellowship with the people of god and your joy is when you're in the house of god now and whatever it is that is happening in town or not happening in town you want to congregate with the people of god you want to continue steadfastly in the apostles doctrine and in prayers and in breaking of bread and in fellowship there is salvation is god's work it's a great salvation from a great god and through great grace for great glory and two two people like two are involved in this you the sinner you are involved and the almighty god is involved you do something little and god does something great on your part as a sinner repentance on his part regeneration regeneration on your part you turn away from sin on his part he makes a salvation to turn unto you your part you contribute repentance and he gives you regeneration on your part it's confession confession you come to the lord how can i be saved you have something to do do your part what's my part confession he will do his part his part is cleansing cleansing he washes you he cleanses you he changes your life on your part faith believe on the lord jesus christ and thou shalt be saved on your part you come with faith on his part it comes with forgiveness and freedom forgiveness and freedom you manifest faith and he gives you forgiveness he gives you freedom on your part is prayer on your part is prayer you pray you say god i cannot save myself could my tears forever flow could my zeal no respite no all these for sin cannot save thou and thou alone must save therefore you pray you are appealing to god oh lord forgive me oh lord change my life oh god give me your salvation or your part is prayer on his part is pardon and peace pardon and peace my peace i give unto you not as the world giveth on your part trust trust you trust him you trust him you lean on him because there's no other name given among men whereby we must be saved only this name of you therefore you trust him on your part trust on his own part transformation transformation and as you trust him you, that's what you can do as you believe him that's what you can do as you confess that's what you can do as you pray that's what you can do as you repent that's what you can do and then he does what you cannot do and it gives you regeneration and it gives you cleansing and it gives you forgiveness and freedom and it gives you pardon and peace and it gives you transformation it gives you redemption when you receive on your part you receive as many as received him to them he gave power even to those that believe on his name you receive reception you receive him and he give you he gives you redemption on your part surrender surrender you surrender your life to the lord jesus christ all you are all you have all you have been you say lord unreservedly i surrender myself to you on his part he gives you salvation surrender attracts the salvation in your life you see what the lord is telling us the lord is telling us that if any man be in christ he is telling me a new creature all things have passed away and behold all things have become new the conversion of our nature we're coming to point number two the consequence of neglect the consequence of neglect come to hebrews chapter 2 hebrews chapter 2 and i'm reading here from verse 3 hebrews chapter 2 and we're reading from verse 3 it says in verse 3 how shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation how shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation the consequence of neglect if we neglect salvation if we neglect the great salvation if we neglect so great salvation how shall we escape what does that mean 
how shall we escape number one how shall we escape divine judgment god will say i have done everything there is to do i gave my only begotten son for your salvation he died and he bore your load and your problem he died an agony in agony an agonizing death so that you will be saved and yet to neglected how shall we escape divine judgment number two how shall we escape the wrath of god the anger of god the fury of god that you rejected his only begotten son you rejected the only source of salvation you thought your puny self your worthless self could bring you salvation when jesus christ died for you on the cross of calvary how shall we escape number two the wrath of god how shall we escape number three eternal suffering eternal suffering because the one that died is the eternal son of god the one that died came from all eternity and is going to live for all eternity the one that died he put aside his eternal glory for you to be saved and now he sacrificed himself and then you say i don't have anything to do with that and you neglected the eternal value of your salvation how will you escape eternal suffering number four how shall we escape everlasting punishment everlasting punishment you know the punishment of our sins was so great that even jesus found it almost unbearable that he said my father if it were possible if there was another way that humanity could be saved and i will not have to drink this cup take it away from me but not my will but thine be done and then he went to the cross and you can see the suffering and you can see it's an eternal weight of pain my god my father my father why hast thou forsaken me and then he died for you and he said it is finished he finished every trans transaction and now you can be saved and then you toss it aside how will you escape everlasting punishment how shall we escape how shall we escape endless torment and the smoke of their torment went off forever and ever and they had no rest day nor night the people that received the mark of the image of the beast and the people that prefer satan to the savior the people that prefer darkness to light the people that prefer uh, to their own selves and their own evil to the righteousness christ is offering them how will you escape the danger and the damnation of eternal torment how shall we escape the damnation of hell damnation of hell that god will say i never knew you depart from me ye that work iniquity how shall we escape the pain what kind of pain no light no light in hell no water no water in hell no peace no peace in hell no love no love in hell no hope no hope in hell no friend no friend in hell no relief no relief in hell forever you know as you look at our community sometimes there's no light the fridge will not work the fan will not work and uh, there, there's no light to read or to see anything if you're lucky to be able to have the light of a candle you manage and you carefully go around the house what if there were no candle what if there were no sun what if there were no electricity no light at all for one day for one week for one month for a whole year and it's dark outside and it's dark inside how do you live how will you be happy and when people go to hell there'll be no light at all in hell it will be darkness forever and ever we're talking of 10 years a hundred years a thousand years a million years a trillion years many many years without end no light 
those who don't have salvation that's what they face no water how do you how do you feel when you're thirsty and there's no water you search here and there and you, there's no water you talk and talk after that your throat is dry and there's no water and the heat of the sun is terrible and you're sweating profusely and there's no water to drink it happens for one day it happens for one week it happens for a month how are you going to feel there'll be no water in hell for one month and for one year for 10 years for 100 years for trillion years many many years uncountable years there'll be no water there'll be no light how are you going to feel and that's the consequence of neglect is be presented unto you and to you today you can be saved and whosoever shall call on the name of the lord shall be saved but the fellow tosses it away and says i don't have time for that there'll be the pain of no light and no water there'll be the pain of no peace how, how do you find it you know you come uh, you come to the house all your neighbors are making a noise and fighting or your neighbors say get up get out of there everybody hates you you turn here there's hatred you turn here there's no love you turn there there's no love and then you you phone somebody you think would love you the fellow you know switches off the phone and nobody wants to listen to you there's no love anywhere on the face of the earth for you when people get to hell there's no love satan will be suffering all the other sinners will be suffering and the rich men will be suffering and the poor poor will be suffering your classmates if they went if they went to hell they'll be suffering everybody will just be suffering and crying of the torment by themselves there's no love in hell there's no friendship in hell are you going to stand that and that's why it says how shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation the question is are you saved are you born again if you consider all this can you live on this earth for one year nobody will sell to you nobody will buy from you they just hit you there's no love and there's no hope there's no hope that this will end it is hatred and suffering and torment forever and ever when somebody is sick over here in the world he's hoping that a doctor will come and treat him he's hoping that that hospital will open he's hoping that that a clinic will Will attend to him and there is hope there is hope if you're sick here in the world and then you're going through torment and pain undescribable and you're saying as the doctor come as the nurse come as somebody come let them come and help me there is hope here in the world that if you're sick somebody might attend to you when somebody goes to hell and begins to suffer the pain and begins to suffer the anguish there is no hope it may end tomorrow there's no hope this will only be for one year there's no hope this will only be for five years forever and ever and ever there'll be no hope a life of no water a life of no light a life of no peace a life of no friendship a life of no hope a life of torment forever and ever how shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation which at the first began to be spoken by the lord and then they told us those that heard him the people that reject i pray you'll not reject the people that neglect i pray you will not neglect look at genesis chapter 19 genesis chapter 19 i'm reading here from verse 17 genesis chapter 19 and here we're reading from verse 17 before this verse 17 the angels told lord have you anybody here besides go and tell them because fire is coming upon Sodom and Gomorrah. And then he went out and every one of those people neglected. Every one of those people, they rejected. The, the judgment of fire was so near. And the, the city was going to be consumed with fire. And yet they rejected. Look at verse 17. It says uh, in verse uh, 17 of uh, Genesis chapter 19. Uh, and this is uh, the angel now because of God showing a mercy unto Lot and his wife and the two daughters that were there so that they could escape the judgment of God. In verse 17 here is what it says. It says and it came to pass when they had brought them forth abroad and he said that he said escape for thy life look not behind thee 
neither stayed thou in all the plain escape for that escape to the mountain lest thou be consumed the fire was very near the judgment was very near if there's anything the church should be doing now it's going out to everybody and telling them judgment is coming it's going out and telling the world is coming to an end it's going out and telling them look at all the signs we'll see look at the heat waves all over the world they call it a, a warming all over the earth and look at the earthquakes we're reading about and look at all the disasters we're reading about the lord is about to come he'll come in the rapture and then there'll be seven years of untold suffering and torment in the great tribulation if there's any time to go and tell people this is the time and then it says when they will not hear yeah, the angels took hold of lords and the wife and the two daughters and said escape to the mountain because fire is coming upon Sodom and Gomorrah don't look behind you there's nothing to look back to everything will be consumed by fire look at verse 26 but his wife looked back from behind him and she became tell me a pillar of fire uh, can, can you can you imagine somebody she saw the angels but she perished she heard not a dream not a dream she had the direct words of angels she perished can you imagine when somebody hears a human preacher and then the fellow rejects it he that rejects you rejects me but this woman she heard angels preaching and they preached about the judgment of God. And they said, here is the way of escape. Escape for your life to the mountain. And she still perished. Some people hear the greatest sermons they will ever hear. They will perish. Some people will see the greatest vision anybody can ever see. They will perish because they neglect. Because they neglect. How shall we escape? If we neglect so great salvation, uh, as you look at, come to Jude, come to Jude, well, we need to have the commentary of the Holy Ghost on that uh, passage we read now in uh, Genesis, Sodom and Gomorrah. What happened to them? The judgment that came, the fire that came upon them, and those people perished all the same. Look at Jude. I'm reading here from verse 5. Jude chapter 1, verse 5. I will therefore put you in remembrance, though ye once knew this, how that the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed them that believed not, and the angels which kept not their first estate, but let their own habitation he has reserved in everlasting chains under darkness unto the judgment of the great day look at verse 7 even as sodom and gomorrah the city is about them and the city is about them in like manner giving themselves over to fornication and going after strange flesh as set forth for an example suffering the vengeance of what kind of fire tell me out loud eternal fire fire that keeps on burning and burning you've never seen any fire like that burning for one year and will not subside you've never seen that burning for 10 years i will never subside you've never seen anything like that and the materials inside that fire alive like a rabbit like any animal alive and burning and burning and running up and down to escape the fire and cannot escape and keep some burning and the rat is suffering and yet cannot escape and nobody can go there and rescue that rat and now it will not be a rat it will not be animal it will be the sodomites it will be the sinners it will be the unrepentant they'll be in that everlasting eternal fire forever and ever I pray you'll not be there. Amen. It will take repentance. It will take turning to the Lord. It will say complete bye-bye forever unto your sin. It will take a sincerity in your heart that says, that hell, I don't want to go there because how shall we escape? 
if we neglect so great salvation it tells us in matthew chapter 23 to escape the great family to escape the a great a judgment of god it's not just uh, being religious let me show some religious people in matthew chapter 23 Matthew chapter 23, I'm reading here from verse 26. Matthew chapter 23, and I'm reading here from verse 26. In verse 26, it says, Thou blind Pharisee, cleanse first that which is within the calm and platter, that the outside of them may be clean also worn to you scribes and pharisees hypocrites for ye are like unto whited sepulchres which indeed appear beautiful outside religious people but within full of a dead men's bones and of all uncleanness even so ye also uh, outwardly appear righteous unto men but within you are full of hypocrisy and iniquity look at verse 33 ye serpents ye generation of vipers how can you escape the damnation of hell that's jesus loving jesus warning the people and reminding them they sell fire at the end of the life of sinning that's why we're reaching out to the people that's why we're going out to you leave everything aside let me ask you if you see the house of your neighbor burning and you know that daddy is there mommy is there whether your daddy or their daddy and the children are there and, and they are asleep and they wouldn't know and the flames are going up and you can do something you can knock at the door you can shout you can bang the window and say come out house is burning uh, if you don't do that and you say i wanted to go to the market aren't you wicked i wanted to go and eat i'm hungry and because i'm hungry i see that house burning i cannot do anything you know? even the world will condemn you we're saying that tomorrow hellfire is very near the people that are not born again and we're saying how shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation the fire of eternal hell is about catching up on them and you say you don't have any chance to tell them you say you don't have any chance to to tell the people and say you say i'm such a big person what if uh, you see a house burning and then you say because i'm a managing director in my place of work i look at that house burning i see people are inside i am too dignified to shout i'm too dignified to tell anybody that their house is burning my position will not allow me to tell them to escape how wicked you are and if people knew about you they will curse that position and that person occupying that position i am hungry and because i'm hungry what kind of hunger there are people that have not eaten for some time because they don't even have the food to eat but you ate yesterday you ate the other day and because i'm hungry i cannot tell that person it's about entry into fire how is it you're coming back from a particular place there's a cliff there because the erosion have washed away the road there's a great gulf and people people who are driving they didn't know that road they are falling into it falling into it and they're dashing their bones and they're dying and then somebody told you and you saw it and just at the nick of time you're able to apply your brakes and you came back and then you're coming back but as you're coming back you want to get back home in time and because in a hurry to get back home in time other vehicles are going there they're rushing there and you know for sure once they get to that place their bones are crushed and they die and they go to hell and you're too much in a hurry to tell anybody you, you can't stop and you can't tell the people there's danger you can't put a sign there there is the danger how do you tell me you're a christian I'm, I'm not sure a person like that even is as good as an animal animals will warn each other if they see a hunter that is hunting them and shot one down the animals have a way they will warn the other animals so that they don't get in the hands of the hunters but you're a human being you don't have the heart of a human being you have the heart of an animal and the heart of that is worse than animal 
world and you see the, the hunter of this world the devil catching people and throwing them into the fire and you cannot raise your voice and say something and we say we're all coming together and we're going to have all these tracks in our hands we want to tell people about eternity we want to tell them how shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation see i don't have time i don't somebody had time for you and told you somebody had time for you and prayed to you somebody had time for you and gave you a try somebody had time for you and prayed to you somebody had time for you and counsel you i don't have time how shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation you have time i have time tell me i have time tell yourself i have time tell the lord you have time the people of God are going out and they are telling everybody, you must be saved. You must be saved. Escape for your life. You must have time. And tomorrow, well, it's just the starting part. We're going to do it tomorrow. Another time, we're going to do it again. We're going to do it again. Until everybody in our neighborhood will hear that they must be saved. And through you and through me and through us together, they will be saved in Jesus' name. Point number three, the concern for our neighbors. The concern for our neighbors. We're looking at Hebrews chapter 2. Hebrews chapter 2, and I'm reading here from verse 3. Hebrews chapter 2, verse 3. How shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation? How shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation? Uh, let me show you this. Uh, look at Deuteronomy chapter 4. 22. Deuteronomy chapter 22. There's a verse there you know very well. Deuteronomy chapter 22. Look at that. Deuteronomy chapter 22. Which verse do you know there very well? Tell me out loud. Okay, let me read the one you know very well. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment, for all that do so are abomination unto the Lord thy God. Have you heard that before? Have you read verse 4? Verse 4. Just the verse before that. The verse before that. Look at that now. Thou shalt not see thy brother's ass or his ox fall by the way and hide thyself from them. Thou shalt surely help him to lift them up again. You see, when we read only one verse in the chapter, verse 5, everybody is reading verse 5. Everybody is reading verse 5. And there's something more important. You will not see your neighbor's ass, animal, your neighbor's ox, animal, fall into a ditch and cannot come out by itself. And the rain will come and beat it there. Arrows will come and strike that ox or ass there. Fire will come and burn that ass there. It says, you will not see the axe of your neighbor and the, the, and the ox of your neighbor fall into a ditch and then you do nothing. You will not see the wife of your neighbor fall into a ditch and hellfire is running after her and judgment is running after her and you see your neighbor's husband and your neighbor's son and your neighbor's daughter more valuable than an ass and more valuable than an ox and then you just close your eyes you're not concerned somebody's wife is perishing you're not concerned somebody's husband is perishing you're not concerned somebody's daughter is perishing and you're not concerned and you have the wherewithal of salvation in your hand you have the ticket of heaven in your hand it's just a matter of handing that ticket out daughter you're precious you're more precious to be firewood for hell don't go to hell here is a ticket and you'll find what to do there so as to get to heaven and you cannot do that there's the voice god has given you there is a mind god has given you there's a knowledge god has given you and there's a passion there's a concern god has given you and that person is there you see them every day you meet them every day and you walk together you sit in the same market and you cannot open your mouth for the wife of your neighbor and for the husband of your neighbor that is falling into that ditch and bring them out rescue the perishing 
care for the dying and tell the Lord, tell the Lord, I will do it. It's looking for people that will say it. And he says, who will go and tell them? And then you say, here am I, Lord. Send me, send me. You will go in Jesus' name. There must be that concern in our hearts. There must be that passion in our heart. We leave every other thing. We suspend every other thing. We say, this is the one thing that must be done. And I will do it and you will do it in Jesus name. We're looking at Proverbs chapter 24. Proverbs chapter 24. I'm reading here from verse 11 and verse 12. Proverbs chapter 24. I was reading from verse 11 and verse 12. It says in verse 11, If thou forbear to deliver them that are drawn unto death, if thou forbear, if you stop, if you'll not lend a helping hand, if you'll not lend your voice to, to deliver them, if thou forbear to deliver them that are drawn unto death, and those that are ready to be slain, if thou sayest, behold, we knew it not. Does not he that pondereth the heart consider it? And he that keepeth thy soul, does he not know it? And shall not he render to every man according to his works? How are you escaping? If you're so wicked, that this is a day when everybody, all our members, all together, leaders and workers and members we're reaching out we love our neighbors we don't want them to perish and we're going to them and we're saying the price of your salvation has been paid and we can tell them and then you fold your hand and you close your mouth as if you are not concerned why are you not concerned love your neighbor as yourself if you were going to fall into a ditch and i knew it and you were just about there and I was there just looking at you and I was afraid to talk to you just totally quiet I would not talk to you and then you fall there you break your bones you break your legs and your hands and you break your skull your head and then just before you pass on to the other side you knew that that neighbor saw me with one word you could have saved my life with just a shout he could have rescued me but he didn't do it he didn't love me as he loved himself if you were perishing and another person knew the way to life eternal you want them to tell you you want them to take the effort make the effort tell me please tell me please what's the way to life what's the way to heaven you tell me that jesus is coming i want to be ready let somebody tell me uh-huh you want them to tell you why don't you tell another person we must love our neighbors as ourselves you see there are people that are you know only self-centered considering themselves they only want to get to heaven yes we want to get to heaven we want to go alone I want your daddy to be crying in hellfire when you go to heaven. Your mommy to be crying in hellfire when you get to heaven. Your siblings, brothers and sisters, to be in hell. And then I'm going to church, I'm going to church. I only know God. You know, they are whatever they are, idol worshippers. And I don't have anything to do with them. I am holy. I am righteous. Is that the right attitude of a person following Christ? I will not tell them. Luke chapter 8. In Luke chapter 8, we're reading from verse 38. Luke chapter 8, we're reading from verse 38. Here is what the Lord is telling us in verse 38. It says, Now the man out of whom the devils were departed besought him that he might be with him. But Jesus sent him away. Fellowship. But Jesus sent him away attachment but jesus sent him away i've seen the light i want to be in church every day but jesus sent him away look at verse 39 saying return to thy own house and show how great things god has done unto thee and he went his way and he published throughout the whole city one man 
and he published throughout the whole city he didn't know the bible from genesis to revelation and he published it throughout the city he had not attended Thursday revival sunday revival monday bible study and he published it throughout the city he had not had the chance of going for retreat and uh, covenant service and he published it throughout the city this was his first time of meeting the lord and the lord touched him and the lord delivered him and the lord gave him an assignment go and tell the people at home and he went and he, he went just when he published it throughout the city how great things jesus had done unto him and it came to pass that when jesus was returned the people gladly received him for they were all waiting for him the latest person only one person is so uh, broadcast it everywhere publicized it everywhere that everybody everybody was expecting jesus let him come they rejected him before now they were going to take this jesus as their personal savior you lost a lot of opportunity and chance in the past to tell people another opportunity is coming tomorrow will you do it i said will you do it you will do it in jesus name our neighbors are perishing we need to tell them our neighbors are going to hell if they are if they have not repented we need to tell them we need to show them the way jesus said i am the way the truth and the life no man comes unto the father and no man gets to heaven except by me you will not allow them to perish that's why we're reading and that's why we're told in hebrews chapter 2 and verse 3 it says and how shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation which at the first began to be spoken by the lord and was confirmed unto us by them that heard him you're making up your mind that from now on you'll not allow your neighbors to perish i said you'll not allow your neighbors to perish whatever will happen whatever they will do whether they will slap you or reject you whatever they will do you will open your mouth and tell them jesus is the way to heaven you'll tell them with passion you'll tell them with see you'll tell them with concern you'll tell them with compassion you'll tell them with tears in your eyes until they break down they will come to christ through you in jesus name i said they'll come to your christ through you in jesus name will you go lord i will go rise up and tell the lord i will lord i will lord i will there's no other important thing to do this is the most important thing for you to do telling people of their salvation telling people how they can be saved telling people how they can come to know the lord go and tell them go and tell them go and tell them jesus died for the sinners go and tell them tell them in such a way they will be driven on their knees they'll accept jesus christ as their personal savior take part in this take part in this make it your life ambition that you'll publish or publicize or preach this great salvation and people through you they'll be saved in jesus name